Did you see how I tweeted about Galchenyuk scoring his first as a Leaf and then he actually did it? I did! That was wild! Do you think that would work on anything else though? James Reimer's getting traded to you the Leafs! Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. <laughs> I don't script these. Are the Leafs alright? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Oh, this, this is my new dangle navy jacket. I got it at stpn.ca. That's called a plug, and so am I! Leafs win! 4-2 to two over the Calgary Flames. This season, it's like the Leafs dominated, they took a brief hiatus away from domination, and then started dominating again. 6-0-1 oh, in their last seven. Yes, there's been some overtime wins. Yes, there's been some shootout wins. And yes, those count too. So let's talk about it. Leafs head into this game, and we're not quite sure what to expect, because Jack Campbell... How healthy is he actually? Then they announce Michael Hutchinson as the Sunday starter, and we don't know at the time I'm recording this who's going to start tonight. And then there was some discussion, uh, oh, who's going to be the backup? I fully endorse not even dressing Campbell if you don't have to. The Leafs have enough of a cushion on first place, and for crying out loud, a playoff spot, that if whoever's starting, Hutchinson, Vavilainen, if they get lit up, uh, too bad, deal with that. But worth noting, Michael Hutchinson, after this game, is 4-2-1 on the season with a 919 save percentage. He had an 886 with a 4-9 record last year, and that's what a lot of Leaf fans know. But if you look throughout his career, that that's an anomaly. His very brief stint in Florida was very bad, but then he came to Toronto and had a 914. He's actually been pretty good here. It's almost like the Leafs traditionally have like 14 back-to-backs in a season, and the majority of them are with travel, and you shouldn't start your backup on the second half of all those back-to-backs. Well, the math involved- yeah, tell me more about the math. Well, statistically, you want to lock down the first, yeah? But hey, Hutchinson's doing fine now, and the Leafs are doing fine in front of him, and last year when he wasn't doing fine, it directly led to the Leafs getting Jack Campbell, so hooray! Anyway, that's the pass, let's talk about this game. First minute! Flames with the puck in their own zone. Noah Hannafin looks like he's got tons of time and space to clear this thing, but Austin Matthews cuts it off. He feeds Morgan Riley near the point, and Morgan Riley just goes for a little casual skate. He's cruising around looking for an option, and shooting's an option. Takes a shot, snipe! Morgan Riley! You know, sometimes this guy, you forget he scored 20 goals a few years ago. He still racks up a lot of points, but they're mostly assists, as is common with defenders, of course. And not only did Morgan Riley score a goal in the first minute, but him and TJ Brody had the highest plus minus of anyone on the ice in this game, both were a plus three. And things are looking good. Apart from the 1-0 lead, the Leafs have an 11-3 shot advantage just 12 minutes into the game. What could go wrong? Jason Spezza loses the defensive zone faceoff, which is gonna happen, but I tell you what shouldn't. I don't know what the Leafs meant to do defensively here, but I'm pretty positive it wasn't whatever this is. I know it's easy to groan about Hutchinson, and it's even easier to say, oh, sometimes you need a save, but dude, look, look, look at this. He doesn't see this. It's deflected. I don't know what they were going for here, but it's a mess, and now it's a tie game. And they would take that tie game into intermission, at least they wish they did! Final minute of the first, that 11-3 shot advantage, that's gone. Backlund pass to the high slot to Andrew Mangiapane, and he manjas up that opportunity too! You see, because Snipes top corner and Hutch look confused as all heck. I mean, yeah, that's probably when you'd like to see your goalie make a save, or at least look a little more clued in on. I'm thinking that puck might have rocketed off of Galchenyuk's stick there, but I, I don't know. Either way, the Flames are up 2-1 after 1. A pretty good start to the game. Spoiled. And in the second period, the Leafs take a penalty, and they head to the penalty kill, which, you know, that's fine, that's gonna happen. But when you're missing stuff before that, like Tavares getting whacked in the face with a stick, it kind of rings hollow. And this is my biggest issue with the let them play method. The let them play method is to call very few few penalties. It is almost never to call none. And the problem with calling very few penalties is the ones you do call look kind of dumb. It was only 91 seconds into the second, Zach Hyman tripping Chris Tanev, and like, yeah, but what about all the other stuff? Anyway, the Leafs kill it, and I thought this was a very good penalty kill from Michael Hutchinson in particular, really battling to see the puck. The penalty kill is where he struggled more than I think any goalie in the league last season. He, he's been much better. Later in the period, Sam Bennett takes a trip on TJ Brody and did a Leaf score to the no! No! The Leafs are somehow in first place in Canada by a wide margin. They have not lost in seven straight games. Well, they haven't lost in regulation in seven straight games. Okay, Gary? And they are all for 28 on the power play, and it feels like more! I'll stick by what I said last game. Like, it's going to go in. It's going to go in. But until it does, they have no swagger. 
None. And a power play's kind of got to play with that. Play with that swagger, that confidence, that authority. And I'll say this ahead of the Monday night game. Uh, they got to get Wayne one. They have to get Wayne Train a goal. Because when he's rolling, the team's unstoppable. And he was a big part of their early season power play success. And it's hard because we keep talking about Matthews and, oh, uh, how is he going to shoot with that wrist injury? With Wayne Simmons, the conversation is like, oh, well, I don't know if he should fight. Well, yeah, he shouldn't do that either. But it's got to be difficult to shoot the puck having battled the wrist fracture that he had earlier this season. It's going to be difficult, but I think they got to get Wayne one. I, I mean, if they get anybody one, that'll be good, but I, you got to get Wayne one. And you know who else has to get on the board? Near the end of the second, Lee's on the attack. Willie Nylander gains the zone. Nice little give and go play with Morgan Riley to open up space. And the Leafs are losing at this point. They're down 2-1, but what does Ray Ferraro say 40 times a game in NHL 21? If you want bread, you go to the store. If you want goals, you go to the net. He says it a bit differently, but you get it. Nylander puts it on. I can't tell if Tavar is meant to do this or not, but it was great! Wide open net for Alex Galchenyuk! Buries it! Riddick tries the strange scorpion thing that I can't even attempt on camera, but Chucky goes cheese, and it's a tie game heading into the third. This is what I'm talking about, man, especially offensively. Like, Chucky's been doing all the right things. Galley, Galch, whatever! But it sort of weighs on you when the puck doesn't go in after a while, and he's hit, I think, at least three posts in, like, a week. And you can see in the celly how much that meant to him. I want to see what happens with Alexander Galchenyuk for the rest of the season. I think that's his spot. Like, I think he's just sort of there forever now. If Zach Hyman is working out with Matthews and Marner, which I think he is, and Galchenyuk is working out with Tavares and Nylander, which I think he is, I think your path is easier to see. Your deadline, specifically, is much easier to figure out. But I'm still just not a big fan of the way the bottom six is configured right now, and they gotta figure that out. But now we're getting into a whole other conversation. Alex Galchenyuk, welcome to the Toronto Maple Leafs, my friend. See, that's not what you were saying before the Leafs got him. You're right. I was wrong. And I'm pretty happy about it. Now in the third period, what is up with the Calgary Flames? The Leafs are trying to break out of their own zone and they don't even look that great while they're doing it. Certainly not dangerous. Justin Hall kind of slow, gives it to Muzzin. But Muzzin's got pressure so he does this weird little chip pass to Tavares who receives it at the center ice line. And Tavares passes it to Nylander who, Flames fans, I hate to break it to you, but still exists. Nylander comes in on a clear cut breakaway and Riddick stopped. Tavares whacks at it, also stopped and oh, Noah Hannafin boots the thing into his own net. They should review it. That'd be too perfect. Some of the kicks that have counted over the last couple weeks if they did nope can't kick it into your own net like that nope and Hannafin breaks his stick on the post because you can't break your skate can you they're more expensive and would hurt I know that no NHL player in the history of man has been stoked to get scored against but the body language on these guys on Hannafin look at Anderson behind him too just miserable I've talked about the flames on the podcast for a long time I I didn't think they were anything special like particularly but they should be better than this. Like, what a nightmare season for the Flames. No fun in Calgary right now. But the Flames don't mope. They try to get back into the game. Manjapani gets another great chance on Hutchinson. But Hutch, again, battling. Like, really working hard to see the puck through traffic. And after that save, the puck goes the other way. And the Leafs have the puck in the Flame zone. And the Flames get it back. And they're about to break out and can't. Once again because of Austin Matthews. And just like the first goal, it's because of Austin Matthews once again. That's Matthew Kachuk with the... The puck and I know if he gets rid of it he's just handing the puck over to the Leafs but at least it's out for crying out loud this puck never leaves the flame zone look at that Matthew spins knocks him down with his behind and Zach Hyman comes in to collect Hyman manages to keep it away from Chris Tanev the back pressure from Kachuk is just not good enough Hyman gets a down low to Marner cross crease to Austin Matthews jeez this line is magic Austin Matthews scores league's leading goal scorer points at Mitch Marner and every time I see that I still think Think about how it took years to put them together! Don't get me started on the Spencer thing! No, no, we don't have to do this every time. We don't. Austin Matthews scores, and the Leafs are now up two. And Michael Hutchinson and the Leafs defense find a way to hold on. They were outshot by the Flames. The Leafs had far more blocks than the Flames. I think it was 17 to 5. And they find a way. Like, by the standard that the Leafs set for themselves this season, that's as mediocre a game as we've seen. And they still found a way to win pretty convincingly. Once again, some of the stars of this game, Austin Matthews with two great, like, offensive defensive plays. Riley and Brody plus three each. Justin Hall, by the way, take a look at that guy's ice time. He led all Leafs with 23 minutes. 23-44 to be specific, and only 44 seconds were on the penalty kill, which means he played 20 
23 minutes in even strength. Galchenyuk getting his first as a leaf. That Nylander, Nylander and Tavares are both playing different with this guy. And Michael Hutchinson, maybe it's time we put respect on his name. Questions. Before we get to questions though, uh, at the time I'm shooting this, we don't know if Jack Campbell's gonna play tonight. I don't know if the Leafs are just playing coy or if they actually are worried about pushing it. If they are even this much worried about pushing it at all, don't play him! You have 53 points, you're in first by like three wins. Give Vevelinen a game for crying out loud. You do not need to be taking risks right now. Are the flames going up in smoke? Or is Toronto making us all be leafers? Well, the Leafs are definitely doing really well this year, for sure. But the Flames, it's not just the Leafs, man. Here's how bad the Flames have been. You remember there was a video that went around Twitter of their warm-up before a game against the Senators? Their warm-up was so bad that after I saw it, I immediately put money on the Senators to win, and they did. The Ottawa Senators made me money. It's only like five bucks. I should have bet more. It was such a bad video, and they lost like, I think it was 5-1. And what's weird about the Flames is I don't necessarily think they'll be bad next year, or I wouldn't be surprised to see them turn it on. They have the talent. It just seems like the attitude around that team is horrible. And it looked like it was changing under Daryl Sutter when they went like 3-0 and when he started. And it's gone. I think big changes are coming there. But I think it's a retool, not a rebuild. The power play? <laughs> <laughs> we can just stop it there. Is it all on the players or is a change in the special teams coaching needed? Do we change the players on the power play or change the whole approach to how we enter the zone and set up? Well, Manny Malhotra is manning the power play and I didn't know. He just got here. And their power play was previously first place for like a big chunk of the season and it's only recently started to stink. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. We all know the talent's there, right? And the good news we should be taking from this, they're 6-0-1 in their last seven games without a single power play goal. I mean, you want the Leafs to be outscoring their opponents 5-on-5, five five, which they are. They've gotten a couple shorties. Like, it's encouraging heading into the playoffs anyway, how, the, how they are outside of the power play. To me, the entry's a big deal, for sure. The entry is infuriating. It's so frustrating watching the Leafs get stopped at the blue line almost all the time. But when they do gain the zone, what was so good about them early in the season, besides the fact that the puck actually went in, is they're not going to score on every shot, but they were able to get rebounds. They were able to prevent the clearing attempt and they would just exhaust their opponent. They haven't even looked that terrible from time to time. I think they're due to break out. And I think, like I said, I would really like to see that power play streak end and I would like Wayne Simmons to be the guy to do it. I just feel like it would be a bolt of lightning for the team. Hi, trying to follow from Europe. Isn't that fourth goal the classic Leafs goal this season? At least from this line. Matthews back checks. Hyman will power sit through everybody. That's a great way of putting it. Marner with the perfect pass. Millisecond perfect for Matthews who scores those ingredients. Stars fire drool. Ah, this is the question that Kyle Dubas has to figure out because that line rules. It does. It's very, very, very good. My hesitation with that line is Hyman Engvall Mikheyev was very, very good. And when we talk about the trade deadline and who the Leafs can get, it's easy to be allured by, yeah, why not have that Hyman Engvall Mikheyev line and also Taylor Hall! Simply play Taylor Hall with Matthews and Marner! The easier and cheaper and probably more prudent move is to get a third liner, uh, either winger or center, to just add to the depth of the team and really what they should focus on is having a real shutdown option that's also a scoring threat. That's what the Mikheyev Engvall Hyman line was and that's why it's so alluring. I guess what we're coming up with is they're really not far away from looking like a dominant playoff team up front. So my friend, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell your friends, smile.